So about a year ago, I started wondering if it were possible to build your own DIY case feeder from scratch. I looked around the internet and found a number of discussions and videos made by people who'd built their own, but all of the designs required access to woodworking tools or other equipment that I couldn't really use in my apartment. I also found that there was really no single comprehensive guide to building one of these things from the ground up, with plans and parts lists and directions for assembly. Not long after that, I started getting interested in 3D printing. I had the idea that it would be an interesting project to see if I could design and build a case feeder for my Hornady Lock and Load Progressive Press, with the goal of fabricating as much of it as possible directly on the printer. I wound up buying a 3D printer and trying to teach myself how to use 3D modeling tools, and a year later I have what I sort of jokingly refer to as the shoebox case feeder, because it's small enough for me to use in my apartment, which is about the size of a shoebox. In this video, I'm going to walk through the concept, design, and various components of the case feeder. For people who are already familiar with how case feeders work, this might be a bit basic, but this video is really intended to be part of a comprehensive guide to building your own feeder. So I'll go over every part and talk about how it's printed, describe any additional finishing that's required, and talk about any additional parts that can't be 3D printed. So let's do a quick overview of the case feeder, and then get into talking about the individual components. Starting at the top, the hopper assembly is what holds unsorted cases. It has a rotating plate driven by an electric motor that makes sure that cases are fed into the press with the open end up. The drop tube feeds the properly oriented cases from the hopper down into the other parts of the feeder. It also stores the number of cases in the tube, which allows the feeder to get cases ready ahead of time so you don't have to wait for each case to be properly oriented by the hopper. The drop tube is secured by one or optionally two supports, which are attached to a vertical support tube that bolts to the back of the press. The upper assembly takes cases from the drop tube and feeds them into the press one at a time. It has a spring-loaded shuttle that travels back and forth to take a case from the tube and drop it into the lower. The lower assembly is what actually feeds each properly oriented case into the shell plate of the press. It has a shuttle that travels back and forth as the press arm is lowered and raised. A brass rod passes through the shuttle and is bent into a shape that forces the shuttle to move back and forth as the press ram goes up and down. Everything is supported by a square aluminum pipe that bolts into the back of the press. So let's talk about the hopper in more detail. The hopper is made up of the bucket, the frame, the plate, the hub, and the funnel. The bucket does what it says on the box. It just holds a number of unsorted cases so that they can be properly oriented to be sent into the press. Inside the bucket, there's a rotating plate that's specific to the caliber you're working with. So far, I've tested 9mm and I'm working on 223. But in theory, the feeder should work with pretty much any small or medium sized pistol or rifle brass, provided the caliber specific components are swapped out. The 9mm plate has a bunch of more or less 9mm sized holes cut out of the perimeter. As the plate rotates, cases fall into the holes. They either fall in with the case mouth facing up or facing down. Because the bucket and plate are oriented at a 45 degree angle, the weight of the case head is going to cause cases that are oriented mouth down to fall out before they are rotated to the top of the bucket. Cases that fall into the hole with the case mouth facing up are kept in the hole by the weight of the case head until they reach the top of the hopper bucket and fall down into the drop tube. The plate is driven by the hub, which in turn is bolted to an aluminum set screw hub that's attached to a 12 volt DC electric motor. The frame also has a micro switch that interrupts the current to the motor when the drop tube is full. The micro switch has a simple 3D printed extender glued to its arm, which allows the relatively light weight of the cases to trip the switch. The micro switch is positioned so that the end of its actuator arm extends just below the bottom of the body of the frame, so once the drop tube fills up with cases, the switch will stop the motor. This keeps the hopper from backing up. Once the user has fed a few cases into the press, the switch closes and the motor starts up again to fill up the drop tube. Finally, the 9mm hopper funnel attaches to the bottom of the frame to couple it with the drop tube and reliably feed cases into it. The motor, along with the power switch, barrel plug, connector, and a micro switch, are all contained in the frame, which also supports the bucket. The frame is bolted to the support tube. 
Here you can see the motor inside the frame, along with the power switch and barrel plug. The motor has threaded holes that allow it to be mounted directly to the bottom of the bucket. To save on weight and material, the frame has open sides. The design includes lightweight panels that can be printed and glued on to cover the open spaces in the frame, but I haven't bothered doing that for this initial version. The frame is mounted to the support tube using threaded brass inserts, but in this video I don't actually have any screws in the inserts because there's a good enough friction fit to support the weight of the frame. The hopper is entirely 3D printed with the exception of the motor, electronics, and mounting hardware. You could probably use a regular plastic bucket instead of a 3D printed one, but my goal was to fabricate as much as possible on the printer. The drop tube and support assembly is made up of the drop tube itself, one or optionally two support brackets, and the drop tube adapter. The drop tube is just a piece of copper tubing cut to a specific length. I painted mine fire engine red because I think it looks classier. The support brackets have two purposes. They hold the drop tube in place and they position it where it needs to be in relation to the upper assembly, which I'll talk about later. The last part is important because the end of the drop tube needs to be just above a certain point on the upper shuttle in order for everything to work smoothly. As the drop tube passes through the support bracket, it's contacted by three screws that are positioned 120 degrees from each other in a circle. So by tightening or loosening the screws, the drop tube can be pushed around to accurately position the end over the upper shuttle. One of the things I wanted to get right in the design of the feeder is that it should be adaptable if your particular press doesn't exactly match the dimensions of mine. There are also one or two parts, for instance the brass guide rod that drives the lower shuttle back and forth, that are difficult to get exact because they have to be made by hand. So there are a few features of the feeder, like those three positioning screws, that are intended to allow it to be tuned a bit. The drop tube adapter is fitted to the end of the drop tube to precisely position the cases as they fall. It's secured to the drop tube with a set screw, so it can be moved up and down to accommodate brass of differing heights and to support a bit of fudge factor if you don't happen to cut your copper tube exactly the same length as mine. The upper assembly consists of the platform, the shuttle, the funnel, and the roller. The platform is the main body of the upper assembly. It sits on top of the press and is bolted to the support tube. It has runners that the shuttle locks into so that it can move cleanly back and forth to pick up a case from the drop tube and push it forward until it slides into the funnel. The funnel guides the case as it falls to a specific spot on the press. In this design, the funnel is currently caliber specific to 9mm, but the next version should be adjustable so that it can accommodate a range of case sizes. The roller is attached to the back of the shuttle by a bit of glue and a couple of bolts that pass through the shuttle walls. It allows the sail on the lower assembly, which I'll discuss next, to come up and smoothly push the shuttle forward. The underside of the shuttle has a threaded insert into which a bolt is screwed. The head of the bolt captures a spring, the other end of which is attached to the tip of the brass guide rod, which passes through a hole drilled in the platform. The spring ensures that the shuttle returns to its original position, ready to pick up the next case from the drop tube each time the press arm is raised. The lower assembly is made up of the shuttle, the pusher, and the sail top and bottom. The shuttle moves back and forth on the metal arm that extends from the ram on the press. At the top of the ram stroke, the shuttle is moved back far enough so that the pusher, which is attached by a screw to the front, can pick up a case as it falls through the upper platform and is guided by the upper funnel. The pusher is currently caliber specific for 9mm, but it will likely work with similar size cases. A bolt screwed into a threaded insert in the shuttle keeps the pusher in place, so its angle and position can be adjusted. This is important because making the brass guide rod accurately is probably the most challenging part of this design. So the pusher needs to be adjustable so that it can be positioned correctly to grab a new case at the top of the ram stroke and push it into the shell plate at the bottom. The purpose of the sail is to engage the roller on the upper shuttle and push the shuttle forward as the lower assembly rises along with the press ram. 
This pushes the upper shuttle along its runners to deliver a case from the drop tube to the funnel and down to the level of the lower assembly pusher. The sail is made in two parts to allow a certain fudge factor in assembly. The top of the sail needs to engage the upper roller at the proper place so that it can push the upper shuttle forward enough to move a case from the drop tube to the funnel. A lot of that depends on how the brass guide rod was made and where it was positioned on the press, so the upper part of the sail can be placed at various angles and heights to ensure smooth operation of the mechanism. Almost every part of the feeder is 3D printed, with the obvious exception of the electronics and the various other hardware parts. Mostly this is simple stuff like springs, M3 and M4 nuts and bolts, brass inserts, aluminum tubes, and so on. The documentation will include a complete parts list along with links to the various places I bought the components online. Initially I'll be releasing a kit you can use to print and assemble your own case feeder that will work out of the box with 9mm brass. This kit will include STL files for all the printed components, a complete hardware parts list, some guidance about choice of materials for 3D printing, and assembly instructions. Of course I'll be making the kit available for free. I'm hoping there are enough people at the intersection of reloading and 3D printing to get some use out of it. I'll also be releasing the design files as open source under a non-commercial license. That means you can modify and distribute the design, but you're not allowed to make money with it. The raw source files will be up on GitHub so people can tweak or modify the design, adding or simplifying features, making it work with other calibers, or branching it to work with progressive presses from other manufacturers. So that's my 3D printed case feeder. It's been a lot of fun over the last year or so putting this thing together piece by piece and teaching myself 3D modeling and 3D printing along the way. I hope you find some use for it. Happy reloading and happy 3D printing.